I am going to go ahead and share my screen. In like just a second, I promise it's coming. Maybe, yeah, I'm going to do the agenda. Sorry. Oh, no, yeah, no problem. Then maybe Josh could introduce himself and then we could introduce ourselves to Josh because I think, Josh, this is your first time. And Amber is also her first time. Also, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah. Obviously, I know Amber, but it's true. Most of you don't, so yeah, you're completely right. Welcome back, Roman. Nice to have you for the second time. Okay, Hello. so I'm Josh. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to use a space which is well lit. Um, unfortunately, well lit means that there's a sun somewhere out in the general area, and it kind of washes everything out. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, yeah you can. Sure. Um, I currently work for a small company and we use Jenkins. Uh, in past lives, I've worked for Research in Motion and Nokia. And before then I worked, uh, well, up through Nokia, I was working on the Mozilla project um, for various companies. Um, so I've done various things for user interfaces at various places. I will slowly be taking over more of the actual user interface work for or design work for our actual company project going forward, probably. Um, but um, I'm doing this work because basically I work to improve anything I touch and Jenkins is something that we're using. So here goes. Awesome, welcome Josh. Amber, do you wanna do a quick little intro and then, and then we'll run through the agenda. Sure. Uh, Amber, I'm going to be managing the design team overseeing Flow, Core, Jenkins, and Accelerator. So dropping in to um, uh, take a look at what's going on, see how I can help. Cool. And then as we usually do, let me make sure I'm not missing anybody. I think that's everybody who might be uh, new to the call. Somebody stop me if I'm wrong. And uh, as we usually do, we'll just kind of run through the agenda for today and then give folks a chance to add something uh, if they want to. So a couple of quick updates on the list for today are, uh, it's very simple, just a reminder of that new resource. We'll take a look at that when we get started. Um, we'll take a look at a second, or not a second, a new design deck this week with text link styles and a footer design. And then we have uh, a discussion here about how to triage some, some open source uh, tickets as well uh, that Felix, you could probably speak to a little better than I could right now. Um, is there anything anyone wants to add to the list today before we dig in? All right. Can Sounds I ask good. for one quick thing? Um, sure. Somebody has joined as foundation team, dot, dot, dot. Yeah, um, that is... That's funny because I was actually posting a comment right now. So, hi, Jeff, happy, Josh, happy to actually meet you kind of well, not in real life, but to see each other. I'm Baptiste Mathieu, so I'm, I've been contributing to Jenkins for a few years. I'm Batmat in many locations, so yeah, happy to meet you. Hi. Awesome. All right, let's dig in. So the first thing on the agenda here is super so Josh, simple. All the names will also be in the minutes, so I, I update the minutes. So if, every, if you need or you're interested in everybody's names, just read the minutes when it's finished and you'll find all the information, hopefully. Cool. So first on the list here, we've got, uh, this is a, a resource that was requested a couple meetings back. Uh, essentially, for folks who could not make every meeting and you know we have one of these every other week, uh, they wanted a way to kind of be able to scan uh, design improvements and see what's going on without having to attend or maybe they had a conflict. Put together a super simple web page here. All this does, it's again, very, very straightforward, is gather up mocks from our different meetings, pulled directly out of our slides, and then these link back to the, uh, the relevant slide from, from uh, or slide deck from that meeting. So this is sort of just a, a board to, to collect those all up and that's useful for some people. So just a reminder that that is there. And the second thing we'll dig into is a design deck for this week. Actually, I already have it open here. 
Cool. So it always kind of pet peeves me when people don't go full screen uh, because it's, you know, it's right there, but I'm actually going to break my rule and not go full screen this time. Just anyone let me know if, uh, if that's not big enough to see or anything like that. And because we have a couple of people on the call today who aren't normal attendees uh, or maybe interested in the initiative, I'm going to run through some of these uh, slides that are usually here that we usually skip over when there's not a new person attending. I'll try to do this quickly. So, so what is this, right? What are we even looking at here? Uh, of course, this slide deck was created as a resource for the Jenkins UX SIG, which stands for a special interest group. We meet twice monthly uh, and discuss ongoing Jenkins design projects and the long-term future of Jenkins user experience. What uh, motivated the SIG in recent months was that CloudBees is working on a visual refresh of the Jenkins interface. And so the design team here is sharing details about each redesigned component in these meetings. And this is part of our process, key part of our process, where we gather feedback from the open source community from all of you. And that, uh, as we have seen in recent meetings, has a really big impact on how the designs unfold and on what we implement. Um, we've gotten some great feedback. We were in Slack for a while, we moved over to Gitter so that the conversation is more public. Um, and it's been a, a really good back and forth for the past few months now. Uh, I won't read through everything here, but if you'd like more context about the visual refresh, what is this initiative? How does it relate to the Jenkins brand? Um, is this CloudBees taking over Jenkins? The answer, definitely not. And how that all pans out is, uh, is here. And this slide deck and every other resource we have related to the SIG is all in one consolidated resource doc, which I can reshare after this meeting. One more thing I'll mention here uh, is uh, this last tidbit about working toward a Jenkins design system. Um, this is something that uh, the community has tried to do in the past. You know, there have been there have been previous attempts to try and do this. It doesn't make it any less valuable to try and, and make it work now. We're coming at uh, this, uh, trying to, to involve all of the relevant parties and, and make sure that we're designing um, for what Jenkins is, right? It needs to be fundamentally extensible. It needs to be a community first. Uh, Jenkins is a very special uh, project. And so we'd like to do this, but we'd like to do this the right way. And a small part of that is why we're here talking today in this format. So we'll jump into the first thing here. And I feel like I'm kind of broadcasting just because I went through those early slides, but of course anyone can interrupt me anytime and, and we can talk freely throughout the call. So. Uh, the first thing we'll look at here is standardizing text to link styles. It might seem like a fairly trivial thing right now, but you know, text links in different forms are very common throughout the Jenkins interface. Uh, and so what I want us to, to do here, the intended outcome, is to establish clear, oops, establish clear interactive states for different types of text links throughout Jenkins and improve clarity to support the way people use them now but also make them more intuitive for people who are coming to Jenkins maybe for the first time or relatively new. Uh, some additional details here, and we'll take a look at, uh, at these in just a second. Thus far, uh, we've identified three distinct types of text links, sidebar, ephemeral content links, and standalone links. We'll look at those in more detail in just a sec. And I wanna highlight too, the nature of this meeting is, is never to say, we have designed something or we have implemented something and it's done, here's what we did, it's over. The nature of this meeting is we're working on X, Y, Z and we'd love your feedback on it. So the stuff we look at here, you know, it's not set in stone. Uh, we, we of course need to maintain sort of a window for feedback, but totally open to it. So just to point that out. Uh, some more stuff here, clearly defined link styles, the way they improve the user experience is by communicating the type of content that they link to, right? So I mentioned links are everywhere throughout the interface right now, but if we can uh, define some clear styles and, and, and help people over the long term associate um, different functionality and different types of content based on the styles links, that can make the overall experience a lot more intuitive, even though it doesn't look like a dramatic shift visually. Color treatments are based on the Jenkins color palette, which we've looked at in the previous meeting. And of course, just like any other component, right? These explorations are going back and informing the evolution of that palette. So a tiny example being a visited state for a link 
this um, violet color wasn't per, per, that wasn't previously in the palette, so we're going back and adding that. Just like with any component or any element, uh, they feed off of each other and, and make the, the system stronger over the long term. And just, yeah, so just like I was saying there, as with most other elements, these will help inform the design of more complex components moving forward. Uh, and so we can dig into those three categories that I mentioned, sidebar text links, ephemeral content, and standalone. I think there's a couple comments. Let me just make sure, of course, anyone can just speak up, but I wanna make sure I'm not missing. Yeah, that's a great point, Josh. Um, we can link to get her on the agenda for sure. Oh, awesome, already done. Sweet, so let's talk about these. The sidebar text links, um, this category of link, right, is exclusively inside of that, that left panel, that sidebar, we don't have a official designation for it. Different people call it different things, but it's where most of our navigation occurs and it's where, of course, plugins can contribute um, navigation items and different links as well. So the treatment for those links is very much, uh, you know, a work in progress on the design side right now because we're also currently designing that, that panel. So these will change quite a bit, but this kind of gives the idea that we're starting to think about what would be necessary for links in that panel um, as far as different interactive states. Some of these are already there and some of them maybe haven't been considered yet. It's, it's a mixed bag throughout the interface, but this is something we're mindful of. The second type of link here would be uh, what we're just calling ephemeral content text links. Uh, so these are links to content where it's especially useful to have a visited state. Uh, something that um, might exist in a, in a, a tall list of links, um, say uh, different, different builds perhaps, and, and it's especially useful to go and see which ones you've clicked back into. Whereas by comparison, uh, sidebar text links for top level navigation items, it's not useful to have a visited state. In fact, it can be sort of a detriment to the experience, especially for new users, to have that for, for something that's more high level. So this is stuff that, oh, there we go. So this is stuff that won't necessarily be a link that's commonly available forever. It might not be referenced all that, that frequently. Um, we're thinking about how to, to solve for that category. Yeah. If and then the I last, may, oh, go ahead. Sorry. If I may elaborate, the ephemeral category as well, we, ephemeral is the best name we came up with, is mostly thought for stuff like job, a uh, number of bills, jobs. Uh, on the first, uh, when we first ran these uh, hyperlinks in CloudBee, some people told, okay, we want the specific styles for, for jobs. We want to see wh wh when a job was visited, when a build was visited, when an artifact was downloaded. So that's why we want the family of, um, of uh, there is a family. Yeah, I know ephemeral isn't good. <laughs> uh, we accept a better name. Um, we want, what we want is a family of styles for stuff that would you, a user would want to see that is necessarily not permanent or, or not uh, static, and the user can see that whether they have visited it or not. So that is the context for this. Dynamic links, yeah, dynamic. Dynamic may be better. Yeah. Sure. And we, I mean, just like, just like the, you know, whatever, anything else we look at, we can totally change that. So that makes more sense. Sure. Uh, also, Josh is posting, don't hesitate, Josh, by the way, to raise things um, already because I'm not sure everybody is watching the, the chat, but you had a comment about text versus text link. Yeah, that's back probably around five slides. Um, it, in the, when you started talking about the sidebar, um, you can get away, yeah, so if you look at the top left for enabled sidebar text link, the real problem with the sidebar is that you also occasionally have things that are just pure text. And if you aren't keeping that in mind when deciding for the style of enabled text links, then you're missing what's actually important about how it's different from something. It's different from text. Mm -hmm. So that needs to be visible and in, in conversation with text links. Yeah, yeah, I totally agree. And like, you know, I mentioned like this one, these are going to evolve pretty dramatically, right? Because this is clearly as an enabled state, not a finished solution, right? This doesn't, this doesn't look like text, like a link at all. Um, so yeah, point taken, and that's definitely gonna happen. 
Uh, I'm in general going to try and avoid using my voice because the more I use it, the more likely I am to cough. So my preference will be to chat. I'm currently no using the version where chats merge to the right and there's a fairly large view screen and a couple of videos on the top. It's working pretty well. No problem. So I have a question about the visited text. I mean, if these text links, I mean, I understand the concept of visited text in a normal kind of website where it's informational, but I mean, how come, I mean, it, is it to have a different style for visited links inside an application? Yeah, um, maybe it doesn't really make sense in my opinion for stuff like going through a sections navigation, yeah. stuff like that. But people, mm, several people do did mention that um, that they think uh, for stuff they want to see whenever they they went into a build. They want to see what, uh, yeah, whenever they co they did see the logs, consult the logs for a specific build. So it's for yeah. those sort of historic elements. I don't, I mean, it seems to me that it's very weird or special case. I mean, because for instance, there's the latest links and those things, which actually is pointing to something different over time. So it's an application, so it's not a website. So yeah, I agree with Jeremy. I, I would actually be more like we shouldn't ever differentiate yeah. links but i mean i'm really really i'm really uh, eager to read and hear from people who would like this to be a thing in jenkins you know or keep being a thing yeah, i think the, you know, to add my two cents there the, the, i think the first time i used jenkins and i saw the visited link state was weird to me as as Batista and Jeremy said, it feels like it's a website, not an application. So an application I don't expect to see a visited link. Yeah. Yeah, it really depends on the type of content. As just says in chat is uh, for build logs, um and the history history elements is, is handy. Yeah, for me for me to visit the state is confusing, but mainly when when related to navigation. Anyway, I, I agree with you. Especially but this, navigation, Jeremy, um, it's very weird. I yeah, mean, but, but we are not considering it for navigation. We are proposing changing right. it for navigation. I agree with you, but this, uh, Roman and Jeremy, but some people mm. did say that, um, some people did say that they missed that and they, it's part of the workflow, but yeah. it, and it's not a, not a weird, not part of a weird workflow, <laughs> but All right. yeah, yeah, yeah. Does the time for your little picture you always share at this moment, Baptiste? Yeah, I was actually thinking about it like someone <laughs> broke my workflow. Yeah, right. Yeah, <laughs> but not, not in that regard. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, I'm, maybe I'm just thinking to address what Josh is saying because it's maybe a subset of things that make sense might be making sense that we enable this only in bid logs, you know, or whatever, but maybe nowhere else or something. But anyway. That's a, yeah, that's, I mean, that's not a bad idea. I think we need to do a little more asking around in Gitter and maybe other places to just to see how it in, how it's a part of different people's workflows, right? Because I don't think that it, even though I personally don't really like seeing them throughout the application either, um, you know, if they're if they're a really important part, and this one's actually not even that that's far a stretch of the imagination, right? Like, it's it's a useful thing, maybe not the most pretty thing, but it, it can be pretty useful. So, that's an interesting idea, though, Baptiste, of uh, of maybe only in certain places where it, it's actually used. It's, yeah, you know, to re accommodate people who might get used to that read in that local place, but I think in like like in the, for instance. Um, central, when you see the jobs, when you see the bills, blah, 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 like, like, I don't know, just the call main panel or something. I mean, I mean, click on the job. Yeah, I've already clicked on that job. I've already visited it, but I, I don't think I ever found that very handy, you know, because I, that's why people do using Jenkins. We look into jobs and this makes no sense to be, you know, purple versus purple, you know? Fair enough. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll raise it again and get her and like, let's see if we can get more voices on it too, um, just to yeah. see competing thoughts. But yeah, that's a good point. Sure. I mean, we have a, many people here already are experienced also with, I mean, Tim, for instance, do you have an opinion about that or Uli? Uh, because I mean, you've been using Jenkins for a few years. <laughs> so your opinion would be interested, I guess, interesting, I guess. Yeah, <clears throat> sorry. Uh, I, I think I don't use these uh, states uh, 
really because I'm just clicking and then I want to open the new page and I don't interested in if I ever have visited that page previously. Yeah. So. I, I use link from GitHub or search and yeah, not really interested. So for me, it's okay to remove it, the state. Okay. Okay, I'd say um, to do more asking, see if more people feel that way or is it just a specific um, the set amount of people or maybe we can consider it narrowing it down only for the builds. So let's yeah. do more research on this one. Sounds good. Shall we, we move to the next one? Yeah, for sure. I want to I wanna watch the time too, so good call. This is a very yeah. straightforward one, so I, I don't think we'll have as much to dig into. Um, what we're calling, because to my knowledge, and it might have one somewhere in documentation, but to my knowledge, it didn't have a name before. So what we're calling the footer inside of Jenkins, uh, the goal here to delineate between current content that is in that space using some subtle visual improvements, and then to introduce a little bit of graceful degradation on smaller screen sizes. Um, I actually wanted to come with a specific question to the group and say, um, I want to get different people's opinions on the value of, the, of seeing those page generation details uh, at the bottom there. Um, say you're accessing or you want to go access on a smaller screen, is that something that you'd be, you know, does anyone have any strong opinions about removing that? Is that something that's a part of your workflow in some way? I'd love more insight there. I've never used it and wondered why it was there. Yeah, but, I mean, that was, that's <laughs> sort of what I would expect to hear, honestly, because same here, but um, okay. Any other thoughts on that for now? Josh has said in chat, why would I want to know about page generation details? Exactly. <laughs> I share that sentiment, but you know, one thing worth that, asking. Sorry, one thing that is shown in the footer is the, the a link to the remote API. Uh, this yeah. is very often used, I think. So we, if you do something here, you need to present it somewhere else. So. I, yeah, you're totally right. Felix actually was pointing this out to me, you know, yesterday and I haven't gone back and updated mocks yet. Um, but yes, that will, that will have to be uh, added in. Mm -hmm. we, maybe we can hide the page generators on the new UI flag to see if somebody complains or maybe ask if somebody actually uses it. Because maybe somebody is half and half Jenkins on a panel. Well, it, I, I was about to say auto refreshing, but not anymore. So then, yeah. Yeah. It's um it's a very it gets very specific in its page generation details right down to the second I think. So it is I'm sure somebody uses it somehow. We'll, we'll we'll look into it a little further to see whether that's keeping around that sort of thing. Yeah. And then the last I'm, thing to look Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, one thing on the footer I'm going I'm going to ask on the sick chat uh, maybe on the developers mailing list because there are a few things that looks like the insertion points for JavaScript on the footer markup. And I'm, go, um, I'm going to ask in the developers mailing list probably on um, Friday to see if um, somebody is actually, some plugin is actually using it because, yeah, in yeah. order to not break things. It might be used so that you can add your own links in there. I think there's a system property that you can set and then you can set your company's URL or something as well. Yeah, I don't know. There's a footer. Uh, there's an empty div with ID, ID called footer within them in the middle. So it's, it's a bit weird. So uh, sorry, Joe. Please go ahead. Oh no, you're fine. That's interesting. Um, and then this we actually looked at in the last meeting, talking about you know, um, very ambitious goals for what we'd like to achieve. And so I put this back in the slide deck because I was anticipating we'd have some people who weren't here last time. Um. I think we're at least uh, at least incrementally working on throughout the rest of this month and next month. Um, it's you know still sort of to be determined to what level of fidelity these will exist. But throughout the past few meetings, we have seen um, you know progress on each of each of these things in some small way. They all inform one of one another. So it's really not a very linear process of like header, footer, buttons, typography. You know we talked a lot about typography two weeks ago, for example, um, and that's further on the list technically. So anyway, I wanted to put that in there, but I don't think there's more to dig into for the moment. And then I know we have a lot more topics still. So I'll end this part here, um, providing feedback, 
the same usual conversation or the same usual slides. And I think we might be ready to move on to the next topic here. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> Trace always oh, has contributors. So Oleg did mention on the sick chat that well, one, th one thing we discussed we, on the past SIG meeting was that we want to um, have more involvement from the community, especially because here at Club is we, we want to focus on the bigger stuff. Um, Joe do, does the designs, validate the designs, and work on the main line. But some stuff is uh, come, come, can and should be left to the community very well. Um, so, what else? Um, yeah. Ah, by the way, Josh, I'm Felix Kiru. I'm the uh, I'm the front end developer who who is um, who is working on this project on the site of Cloudbiz. Um, in case uh, I'm F Kiruga in GitHub. So um, these are uh, this is a list of issues that I've identified. Uh, they are part of the epic for on the Jenkins on the OSS issue tracker for uh, for the this project. So I w wanted to give a rundown for these uh, items. So maybe we can check them. Just do a quick mention. I just wanted to introduce them to everybody and to see from everybody. So uh, yeah, just to make everybody aware. So the first one is um, that the, can you uh, expand on the screenshot? Um, on screenshot. Yeah. So yeah, the new applied banner looks not good, and um, Daniel Beck reported this, uh, I think. And um, yeah, it should be changed. I will probably mark this up as a newbie friendly. Yeah, I would um, be happy to, I, I commented in that one, Felix. I would be happy to play with it, maybe try in the bootstrap <laughs> alerts or something like that. Yeah, I mean, bootstrap alerts, if you just want to copy and paste the code, we, al we already have code for the bootstrap. Uh, we, we already have the bootstrap alert code within Jenkins. The alert, alert dot, dash, danger, all those classes, they are in, Jen in, Jen in Jenkins. If not, you can just copy and paste the CSS from Bootstrap and it's okay. Uh, just go ahead. I just assign it to, your, to yourself and work on the PR. And just like asking the sick chat if you have any, any doubts regarding design or whatever. Okay, thank you, Roman. Uh, next one. Um, and then, hey, Roman, so, so something to keep in mind too, you know, um, I'll, everything's kind of linked on the resources doc, but um, when it comes to like a little individual design decisions and stuff like that, we've got a palette. We're trying to make this whole cohesive long term, right? So like, reach out to me and let's let's work together on that too. Great, yeah. we'll do. Okay, this is more of a tool chain one. This is something that if not if not nobody does it, I will do in the future. So basically. It's, tool chain enhancement that involves the CSS so that we can automatically add vendor prefixes for all the browsers so that we don't worry about when do when developing CSS we don't worry about all worry about old browsers too much. So this is just uh, another one. Can you yeah not a really important one. Uh rename root breadcrumb. So Slavin Nunes um wants to work on this. So this is something that we talked a bit back in January, I think, that having the root breadcrumb called uh, home, it just, it just doesn't feel right. Uh, sorry, called Jenkins. So we were thinking about calling it home. I know some some project, some teams want to customize it in some installations to to say a different name in the in the root in the breadcrumb root. So Slading, uh, Slading Nunes asked to to see if he can get started working on this. It's a, uh, it's, it's a shame he didn't join in this call. Can you scroll down? Uh, there's in the comments where I we discuss we we discussed a bit about enhancing the breadcrumb system. Right now there is no um, there is no um, infrastructure in Jenkins to to for breadcrumbs. They are just, they read some stapler uh, paths and they, they are generated, there are no utilities. You cannot check what, uh, what you, if, if the breadcrumb is, is, corresponds to the current page, if the breadcrumb has a parent. Um, so we cannot do good designs for mobile. That's also one of the problems. We don't have, we cannot do mobile fallbacks for the breadcrumbs. 
So there's a proposal, we, there's a discussion there about improve, Im, improvements on the Java API. Yeah, and just uh, just mentions that maybe home is not okay, maybe main. Ideally for me, this is something that should be configured also, so. Um, so yeah, if I, it would be great if somebody, if you can, if you want to take a look, discuss the Java API, whatever. Yeah. Okay. Uh, next item. So yeah, Josh, uh, I saw that you reopened this great PR. Uh, I think if it's uh, for context, we want to work in the forms in the future to do to this to do actual designs, work in the inputs, input styles, label styles, work on form accessibility, all of that stuff. Right now, it's impossible because of they are the, the the way that Jenkins builds the form is using tables. So. Yeah, this initiative is really important. At least the infrastructure, maybe just having the infrastructure of being able to use DIPS, maybe we can, uh, this allows everybody to expand. Can you, can you, do you want to talk ab about this a little bit, Josh? Or do you prefer, or would you rather not to? Um, so, I mean, yeah, this is, I mean, first of all, I started working on this over a year ago, so I, I don't even remember what I ran into, but yeah, I was probably on some sort of mobile streak and the fact that Jenkins works so really poorly, whereas probably at the time I was starting to play with either Travis or one of the various other competitors, I'm basically a GitHub user and that means that I'm randomly contributing to random projects that use random CIs and every other one did a reasonable job of scaling to mobile but when I was actually interacting with my company's Jenkins on my phone, it was unusable. Um, so uh, this was an effort to, I think this was an effort to try and bite off the easier part because there are thankfully not so many ways you can mess up the settings thing. There's, a, there's essentially a theoretical toolbox that most people are using for it. And so I figured, well, we could try this and if I can push this through, then I can go after the bigger things, which is all the actual UI things. Although if I get this merged and if somebody else wants to take it forward um, to do all the more advanced or some UI things, I'd be quite happy to stick a, a victory flag and move on. Um, but yeah, the, the general idea is that if you get close to narrow screens, you end up having very, basically vertical form. Um, yeah. The picture uh, at the bottom of the screen is a good example. Basically, you have a title and then an object, and a title and an object. And this is that's mostly how uh, mobile things work. Um, again, I was working at uh, Research in Motion before that. I was working at Nokia, and actually, I was at Nokia when Microsoft effectively bought the Nokia Engineering Group. Um, so we were starting to use the Windows Phone style, and that was very much the style. Um, of basically you just had control and thing. And it's actually a very usable model in mobile. Um, it's also, I mean, it's, it's a lot harder to mess up than the models of letting developers try and pick everything. Um, because every, it's, it's fairly forgiving. You, everyone's just sees there's a thing in the thing and just like, okay, well, like, obviously this thing talks to this and there's just not much else to do. Um, so that, that's basically the general design principle. The implementation is basically convert everything from tables to forms, or sorry, from tables to divs, deal with a lot of fallout, and then answer questions of, for instance, where do we put the question marks? Um, the question marks took a little bit of time uh, because on mobile, it's totally fine to have the question marks flush, right? Uh, there was fairly strong feedback saying that if your screen is as wide as the screen in the, that you're sharing, that having the question marks on the far right of the screen and the actual label on the far left of the screen, and if you have a bunch of them next to each other, it's impossible to figure out which one is talking. Um, in theory, if somebody wants to, we could set it up so that the question marks on mobile do one thing and on desk, or do one thing and on desktop do another. I'm not opposed to that but I'd rather land the feature in general and have somebody else move that forward. Again, this feature has taken a year of clock time, um, not technically a year of engineering time. I've done it in bursts. 
Uh, mostly it's spent in various states of um, either test fails or merge fails. Um, but uh, yeah, so it, at this point, I believe it's still in the tests have failed and I don't have a lot of patience for it. Um, currently, my team has an ONGDB database, which is corrupting itself periodically, roughly weekly. In fact, it's scheduled to corrupt itself today. So I'm here for this call because I need to be, because I want to move this forward. I'd like to get some official go for it, let's push this in. But uh, that's about it. I really don't have time to make the tests work. If somebody else could give me a hand, that would be great. I don't understand the Jenkins tests, and I'm not particularly a fan of them because basically whenever I try and take, make any kind of change, I generally spend more time fixing tests, which I generally find to not be particularly great. Now, I'm generally a critic of everything, I and mean, you'll see that I'm giving feedback on everything. As people run here in random projects about everything, I just, but I don't have a lot of time. And again, my f official I has IT, I'm, I have a database that I expect to corrupt itself within the next five hours. So that's an overview. Yeah, well, I cannot talk uh, for the tests. I just want to say that this is a great initiative. I, I think it's really important. This is a problematic because it's really it's really sensitive to to merge conflicts. Basically, every everything causes a merge conflict with this VR. Um, what I would think it would help us. I I, I did try to dig into this PR, read it, understand it. So. Something that I don't I don't really get the picture is where is it now? So um, what what are the limitations? What um, is there? Um, so to what extent is done um, to see how did you end up having a strategy for Im uh, improving the plugins? For me, my 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 thoughts is that we should leverage the F entry or whatever new F entry V2. Uh, Jelly helper as as much as possible so that we can update it and the plugins would update update themselves. Um, but yeah, I don't know exactly where this is at the moment. Um, uh, so to be uh, honest, I, I've only done merge conflicts um, just so I can be yeah. able to be here and talk about it. Uh, the I was for a lot of the things that I've gotten stuck, it's because I'm essentially looking for feedback. Basically, there were a couple paths forward. I didn't really have one that was um, that seemed people were actually actively encouraging. Like with the question mark, people really sided on something. So I was like, okay, I can go that way and just do it. But for which way to go, whether one or the other, there just wasn't enough anybody. Um, the only thing that I actually did get done was I think I got the hetero thing fixed so that it will be able to work once we switch. Um, and so th that cleared somewhere, I think, in like September. Uh, and I th it, the LTS bits for it have also cleared. So at this point, that's no longer a stumbling block. But I, I haven't actually even run this locally. So I don't, but it sounds like you actually tried using it. So it sounds like it's not totally broken. Um, I, I ran it yesterday. Yeah, right. Somebody posted pictures in GitHub. So I'm. Yeah, that's me. Uh, sorry, the Tim. Ah, thank you. Uh, the way Zoom is using is showing pictures. It's just a static set, and Tim is on the next screen, um, which is un unhelpful for me. Um, but basically, I sent PRs to a bunch of the plugins I ran. I have a profile with I think a couple hundred plugins, which I occasionally play with. Um, I. I think Daniel Beck gave me a list of plugins at one point to look for because he ran a script to try and figure out which ones were likely to break. And I did, I used that to try and um, identify things. There are some which I fully expect to break. Uh, I think Datadog might have been one of them, but this was from like probably nine months ago. Um, and maybe like one of the AWS plugins. Uh, so, I mean, the, the general idea for this should be to land right after an LTS branches out, I think, so that 
um, there's the most amount of time to break all the interesting things and then spend time fixing them. Um, because there's no real way, what I ran into is there's really no real way, and you can see this by the open PRs for the other plugins, to convince people that they actually have to make this change until you say, look, this is live, you have to make this change. Um, yeah. Yeah, for me, these, uh, these the, are really. Sorry, quick question. What's the level of effort for the plugin signers to move to this? Sorry, who was speaking? This is Jeremy Hartley. Um, uh, I, I was wondering what the level of effort is for a plugin owner or maintainer to move to this new system. Is there any? It's not a huge amount of work. Um, in most cases, it is literally changing uh, the word table to the word div and the word tr to the word div um, and the word td to the word div, maybe adding some classes that are like td or uh, similar. Uh, right. So it's the amount of effort is a little bit higher if you were actually doing fancy JavaScript to muck around with things. So the, mm. the fancier plugins were making some extra odd copies or doing some really odd things with the work. For them, it'll be a bit more work, but as long as you have somebody who understands it, as opposed to having a plugin that's 10 years old. Yeah. But thankfully, the odds of somebody having an Ajax plugin that's 10 years old that's doing that stuff is, I imagine, fairly low. But I mean, so, for like really, I mean, there's lots of plugins that are like not maintained. And but you're saying every single plugin that has configuration will need to be updated. No, only the plugins no. that are actively used that have been written to use tables, which is oh, most okay. of them do not use tables at all. So, um, oh, yeah. it's so probably under five percent of plugins. Standard jelly, then you, you'll be fine. Yeah, okay. I think something that so. My thoughts on this is that forms are a problem. Forms are ugly and unusable in Jenkins, and there is no good, there are no good primitives in Jenkins to allow to Jenkins does not offer developers enough uh, to for them to have uh, good for, uh, options when dealing with with um, with forms. Also, about for me, forms do need work. Um, this is a necessary step because right now it's it's unstylable. I did try style the tables; it's just not possible. So I think we should maybe try to go ahead with this. Maybe in the future, uh, we can try to support you. Uh, if not, we can try to inherit this PR. Um, but this will not happen within the next month, probably. So because right now we want to follow our roadmap. But we we keep this PR open. We 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 do keep an eye on this PR. If there's a blocker, we will that we can solve. We maybe we can take a look at that. So but yeah, there, may, there's also for plugin developers who are stuck. There is a solution if they're actually doing something sufficiently complicated. They create an extra page that's not in the configuration thing itself. It's a standalone page, and they do mm -hmm. the work there, and it'll be fine because this will not impact them. And in fact, if they're doing something that complicated, they should be doing that in the first place. Um, and yeah. actually between when I started this work and uh, now or a couple months ago, somebody actually broke something out of config. I might've been like, uh, uh, like the VM cluster providers like AWS and things. Yeah, and cloud, cloud configuration. Yeah, cloud configuration, thank you, yes. So basically if you're doing something very complicated, kick yourself out of config, you don't get impacted by this and you get more time and we'll visit you later. Um, so yeah, that, that's, if people can't deal with it, then yeah, that's the other way out. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll try to take a look at this. Um, so I had a bit of a play with it last night and um, it worked for, with everything I had installed, it worked fine. It was just the issue with the padding. Um, so the padding on the help icons and the form inputs are too, too close. If there's test date failures, I can take a look though. Um, yeah, I've... sorry, Tim. Yeah, I, I'm quite happy to set people up so that they can contribute directly into my, brand, into my repository so they can just 
add extra commits to muck with the paddings and styles. I mean, I cool. care about um, mobile and at times I'm a pixel pusher, but on this one right now, and in fact, on some of the other um, Jenkins things I've done recently, I don't care about pixels. I just want it to, it's proof of concept. Somebody else tune the pixeling to whatever they want. All right, I'll, I'll try to take a look. Yeah. Thanks. We'll probably take a look at too. So my goal here would be to get these ready, uh, to get these uh, functionally done, not try to make it prettier. We can do, that's our future iteration. Maybe even, uh, but yeah, okay. Thank you, Josh. I think this is a really interesting PR, a really interesting one. Okay. Thank you for um, listening, Tim and uh, Jeremy. Thank you. Uli, did you, I saw you, you put something, did you remove something? No, I did not remove something. Uh, I, saw, I saw something about booster, but so, ah, okay. <laughs> okay, um, yeah. Okay, um, I don't, is there anything else we want to talk about? I don't have anything else for, for the meeting, but anyone else? <laughs> okay, right. let's all manually test the div, the table to the PR <laughs> and <laughs> see which plug is yeah, Let's try and get it merged into master in the next 12 minutes. <laughs> no, uh, I think what Josh said uh, that landed after uh, LTS is smart. I wouldn't do it after this one. Maybe I don't know if if there is time to merge it after this no, one. Maybe I, after I you. definitely agree with Josh's comments about let's merge it to, to the safest point possible. Yeah. Don't worry about merging when it's safe. You know, it's it's kind of a downstream thing. We merge when when we merge, and it lands in weeklies, I think, and then. You know, the new baseline gets picked where, uh, depending on the various feedback we got, you know, so I don't think we should really worry about, I mean, weeklies are designed for this, so. If it gets, in, if it gets into an LTS, plugin maintainers will fix it faster too. Yeah. And, and anyway, we have that uh, public blog entry from Kosuke like one year or something ago where it has been kind of committed to weekly to kind of uh, try to accelerate or something. We need to find a balance between breaking all plugins and keeping Jenkins relevant all the time. It's hard, but yeah, uh, committing to make plugins that have been released like seven years ago is obviously maybe an endeavor we shouldn't spend so much time on, right? So. Thank you everyone for your time today. Um, Reminder, we're, we have a space or a channel, I guess, over in Gitter. And if anyone needs access, I think actually it should be publicly linked to everyone who attended today. I'll send the resources doc out after this. And I think that's it for this one. And we'll see you all yeah. in a couple of weeks. Tim added the link to the top of the uh, minutes. Oh, right. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Thanks. And for anybody watching that, it's uh, normally every two weeks. Yeah. Is it worth adding it to the event invite on the event calendar? Yeah, also, why not? that's a good one. I'll do that. Yeah, I'll do that since I own that one. Um, cool. Thanks, everyone. Thanks. Have Thank you. Good bye. Week. Good to see you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Bye. bye.